a divorced businessman, Richard Blake, found himself in a predicament. His company was facing a crisis, and he desperately needed to impress powerful investors at an upcoming business dinner. With no time to find a suitable companion, he arrogantly turned to Evelyn, his housekeeper of three years. I need you to accompany me to an important dinner tonight, he declared, more like an order than a request. This is not an invitation, it's an instruction. Go and behave. I need someone discreet and without an opinion of their own. Evelyn, taken aback, concealed her surprise. She knew this was her chance to prove she was capable of more than just cleaning Richard's mansion. With a growing sense of anticipation and tension, she accepted his demand. Evelyn arrived at the restaurant on time, impeccably dressed in a beautiful, elegant gown. Richard, waiting impatiently at the entrance, barely glanced at her. Let's go, he barked, treating her like an unnecessary accessory rather than a person. As they entered the sophisticated restaurant, Evelyn felt all eyes turn towards them. The group of investors, men in suits with evaluating gazes, sat at a table in the center of the room. Richard introduced Evelyn vaguely and dismissively, omitting her last name. This is Evelyn, he said quickly, looking away. She's accompanying me tonight. The investors responded with polite smiles, though some exchanged bewildered glances. To them, Evelyn seemed out of place, and their silent judgment was evident. Evelyn, however, remained composed, observing and absorbing every detail of the conversation. During the dinner, Richard and the investors discussed numbers, profits, and expansion plans. Evelyn listened intently, her silence a stark contrast to the lively discussions around her. At one point, Mr. Lewis, a tall, imposing investor, turned to her with a condescending smile. So Evelyn, he asked, expecting a timid response, how do you feel about attending a business dinner like this? Evelyn, sensing the tension around the table, could have simply smiled and offered a trivial response. Instead, she surprised everyone by asserting herself. Actually, it's fascinating to see how everything works up close, she said calmly. Seeing the concern with financial details and projections is interesting, but I believe understanding the people behind the numbers is also essential. The room fell silent. Evelyn maintained her serene demeanor, while Richard watched her with a mixture of surprise and irritation. She had just shown she had a voice of her own, something he had explicitly ordered her to avoid. Mr. Lewis, startled by her response, let out a short laugh, intrigued by her perspective. An interesting point of view, he replied, while the other investors looked at her with newfound curiosity. Richard, visibly uncomfortable with the attention Evelyn was starting to attract, glared at her, his expression hardening. The night was becoming anything but discreet, the exact opposite of what Richard had planned. Yet, Evelyn seemed to be finding her voice in an environment that, until then, hadn't seemed to belong to her. As the dinner continued, Evelyn remained firm, even sensing Richard's discomfort. He avoided any eye contact with her, clearly annoyed by her growing assertiveness. Mr. Lewis, however, seemed increasingly interested in involving Evelyn in the conversation, perhaps because she was the only one defying the stereotype he expected at a business dinner. When the conversation shifted to social responsibility, something that seemed to distance Richard further from the investor's interests, Evelyn seized the opportunity to contribute. Does Mr. Blake already consider social projects in his company? Mr. Lewis asked, casting a provocative look at Richard. Richard hesitated, visibly uncomfortable. Before he could offer a vague response, Evelyn, without losing her composure, answered directly. I believe social initiatives are a way to give back to the community for the success the company has achieved, she said. After all, companies exist for more than just profit. It would be an important step. Silence fell over the table, every eye on Evelyn but instead of retreating, she maintained a serene expression. For her, this was a matter of integrity. Mr. Lewis, visibly impressed, smiled. Exactly what I think, Evelyn, he said, clearly provoking Richard. It's rare to hear that around here. Richard's expression turned rigid. He had brought Evelyn to the dinner to be invisible, and now she was attracting unwanted attention. Annoyed, he decided to do something that would change the course of the evening. Well, it's easy to talk when you don't know the weight of leadership decisions, Evelyn, he said with a slight smirk. 
Don't you think you're speaking about something you don't understand? Evelyn met Richard's gaze, sensing the challenge in his words. But instead of shrinking back, she responded firmly. Maybe I don't know the weight of leadership decisions, but I understand their impact. And sometimes, those further from power see things that those at the top can't. Her response was direct and unexpected. Mr. Lewis, surprised, let out a laugh, clearly impressed by Evelyn's courage. The other investors exchanged approving looks. Evelyn's demeanor had impressed everyone, and in just a few minutes, she had changed the dynamics of the dinner. Richard fell silent, feeling he had lost control of the situation. He tried to mask his discomfort, but the damage was already done. This was an unforgivable affront. When the dinner finally ended, Richard didn't wait for Evelyn to leave by his side. Instead, he went ahead, leaving her behind. Evelyn, however, didn't need his company. She knew she had stood her ground, that her voice had been heard, and that was what mattered most to her. Little did she know, Richard wouldn't let that night go unaddressed. Back at the mansion, Richard couldn't contain his irritation. As soon as Evelyn walked through the door, he called her into his office, dispensing with any formality. His eyes were full of frustration and disdain. What were you thinking, Evelyn, he fired at her, barely waiting for her to sit down. I asked you to accompany me to be discreet, not to become the center of attention. Evelyn, still calm after the intense night, maintained her composure. She knew this conversation wouldn't end well, but she didn't regret her actions. I just answered a question, Mr. Richard, she said in a controlled tone. I did nothing but express my opinion. Opinion, he looked at her with disdain. You're a housekeeper, Evelyn. You're not paid to have an opinion at a business dinner. You went too far, overstepped every boundary. She held her breath, feeling the injustice of his words. Richard didn't understand her motivation, her desire to show she could go beyond the work she did for him. She could never be more than the housekeeper. If my presence was so bothersome, why did you take me there, she asked, her voice calm but firm. Don't give me that, Richard responded, his voice cold and calculated. You were doing your job and getting paid, including to stay silent. Consider this your last day here. You're fired. The declaration fell like a final sentence, but Evelyn, determined, didn't let the impact show. She just nodded, maintaining her dignity. She stood up and, with one last look at Richard, turned her back. She left the mansion, knowing she would never have to endure Richard's disdain again. That night had given her a clear vision of who she was and what she could do. Evelyn knew that this firing, though harsh, was just the beginning of a new chapter. The next day, as she was packing her last things, she received an unexpected call. It was Mr. Lewis, the investor who had been impressed by her stance at the dinner. He wanted her on his team, a position she had never imagined being offered. With a mix of surprise and determination, Evelyn accepted the offer. The humiliation of Richard's firing quickly transformed into the opportunity of a lifetime. In the months that followed, Evelyn shone in her new position under Mr. Lewis's guidance. She discovered talents and abilities she had never had the chance to explore while working for Richard. Her determination and leadership skills quickly caught the attention of her colleagues, and she became a respected figure within the company. Finally, Evelyn was in an environment where her voice was heard and valued. Meanwhile, Richard's situation couldn't have been worse. The crisis in his company was worsening. Impulsive decisions, focused solely on immediate profit, were taking their toll. Due to his arrogance, Richard had lost important contracts and driven away valuable business partners. The tide turned completely when the company where Evelyn now worked acquired a significant portion of Richard's company's shares, putting Evelyn in a leadership position directly linked to his business. The reunion happened at a major leaders' meeting. When Richard entered the room and saw Evelyn sitting at the conference table, his face paled. He hesitated, his gaze fixed on her, as if trying to understand how his former housekeeper could be there, among the leaders. Evelyn met his gaze, relentless but serene, without any apparent trace of resentment for her past treatment. What mattered was her new position and the opportunity to make a difference. The tension was just beginning. 
After the meeting, Richard approached her, his expression rigid, filled with a mix of disbelief and frustration. Evelyn, he muttered, trying to keep control, so now you're here with them. Evelyn stood firm, not letting his surprise affect her demeanor. Yes, I am. And as you can see, our company acquired a significant stake in yours. Richard scoffed, masking his insecurity. This is ridiculous. Do you think that just because you have a position here, you understand what real leadership is? Evelyn remained calm. Richard, while I worked for you, I learned exactly what not to do to lead a team and how to ignore the arrogance that blinds people. It was quite a lesson. He stepped closer, his face inches from hers, but she didn't back down. Don't think this changes anything between us. You are still a lucky housekeeper, he hissed. Evelyn crossed her arms and stared back, her voice firm. That's the difference between us, Richard. I don't need you to respect me. I earned my place, and it wasn't luck. You, on the other hand, are sinking because you never valued anything besides yourself. Richard fell silent, without a ready response. The confrontation exposed the flaws he had spent his life trying to ignore. For the first time, he felt a real doubt, and it came from someone he had considered insignificant. I'll prove to you that I don't need anyone, he said, trying to keep his composure. The company you're trying to take over is mine. Then prove it, Evelyn said, her voice serene, but her gaze challenging. Show that you are still capable of leading and saving your own empire, but remember the fall of those who think they know everything is usually faster. She left him there in silence, absorbing every word like a bitter truth. Richard felt isolated and humiliated, but that conversation made him see, for the first time, that he was on a path that would only lead to more ruin. Evelyn was now more than an opponent, she was the mirror he feared most, showing his flaws without any mercy. Evelyn's words echoed in Richard's mind like a truth he wished he had never heard. After the confrontation, it became harder to ignore the mistakes that brought him to the brink of bankruptcy. For the first time, Richard felt the weight of his pride, the same arrogance that had driven away good employees, partners, and even his own family. That night, instead of burying himself in strategies to try to save what was left, he reflected on every rash decision he had made. Days later, Richard and Evelyn were called to an important meeting with the investors. The atmosphere was tense, and the future of his company seemed to depend on that meeting. Richard, nervous and worn out, entered the room with a stiff posture, trying to show confidence. Evelyn was already there, calm, reviewing some documents. As soon as they sat down, the leader of the investors spoke frankly. The current situation of your company is alarming, Richard. We need a drastic change, and quickly. To be clear, this is your last chance to convince the board that you are capable of leading and reversing this situation. Richard felt a knot in his throat, but he struggled to maintain his posture. He began to talk about new plans and strategies, trying to regain control. However, it was evident that his vision was still superficial and focused only on immediate profits. The investors exchanged skeptical looks, realizing that Richard was repeating the same mistakes. Then, Evelyn spoke up, surprising everyone with her approach. The focus of this company needs to change. It's no longer enough to just aim for profit. We need to reconnect the brand with the people, and that means a serious commitment to social responsibility and our employees. The investors exchanged glances, visibly interested, and the group leader signaled for Evelyn to continue. She spoke confidently about the benefits of integrating social projects and humanizing the company, creating a positive impact and ensuring a sustainable future. Next to her, Richard felt powerless. He not only noticed Evelyn's confidence in every word but also saw the admiration the investors had for her. The truth was clear, he was losing control of everything, and she was saving his company. When the meeting ended, the investors seemed more confident with the plans Evelyn presented. As they left the room, Richard stopped in the hallway, and Evelyn, noticing him, turned around. Why are you doing this, he asked, his voice filled with disbelief. Why would you help me save this company? Evelyn took a deep breath and replied without hesitation, because, unlike you, I believe in the value of people, Richard. And more than that, I believe in a better future for this company, with or without you. 
Those words hit him hard, and he stood in silence, absorbing their meaning. For the first time, Richard felt something beyond pride and self-sufficiency. He felt a genuine desire to change, to be a better person. Evelyn watched him for a moment, then turned and walked away. Richard realized that this woman, once invisible to him, was now his most important example. Richard couldn't get Evelyn's words out of his head. He understood he had made many mistakes, but he felt Evelyn judged him at every step. Although he wanted to redeem himself, Richard felt Evelyn had become the symbol of everything he had failed to be. The desire to change was there, but so was the desire to prove he still had something to offer. The tension between them became unbearable. Evelyn, with her impeccable demeanor and sharp words, seemed to see through all his intentions before he even spoke. This irritated him deeply. That week, a crucial meeting was scheduled with the board of investors. The financial situation was still fragile, and Richard knew that any wrong decision could ruin everything. He was determined to demonstrate his leadership and, perhaps, prove to Evelyn that he could still be trusted. On the day of the meeting, Evelyn arrived early and prepared the entire presentation. Richard, on the other hand, had prepared a parallel speech, something he planned to introduce during the meeting to add a bold touch to the plans. He believed this move would be enough to impress the board and show his commitment. However, when the meeting started and Evelyn presented her plan to stabilize growth without compromising resources, Richard realized the board members were inclined to support her. Even so, he remained steadfast in purpose. I understand Evelyn's plan, Richard said, interrupting her at a crucial point in the presentation, but I believe expansion needs to be done more boldly. We need to show the market that we are in a new phase. Evelyn looked at him with a mix of disbelief and disapproval. She knew Richard was trying to prove something, but this was not the time for ego demonstrations. Controlling her tone, she responded. Richard, you are aware that this type of approach has already brought us serious problems before. We are focused on restructuring the company and now prioritizing our mission over rapid growth. The board was attentive to the exchange between them, clearly divided. But Richard, unable to back down, continued. Evelyn, I understand your concern, but if we don't take risks, we are doomed to a mediocrity that will slowly snuff out the company. It needs visibility. It needs to show results. Evelyn shook her head, remaining calm. The company needs consistency, Richard. The people we are helping need a sustainable project. We've moved past the point of acting like a company driven by the ego of its leaders. The tension in the room was palpable. Some board members looked at Evelyn with approval, while others seemed willing to hear Richard's side. However, the board president, Mr. Haynes, intervened, asking both to present a joint proposal at the next meeting. Evelyn nodded, maintaining her controlled expression, but Richard felt he had lost the battle. At that moment, he realized he was no longer in control of the company he had built, and the feeling of helplessness grew. That night, Richard stayed in the office, reviewing financial reports, trying to find a way to make his proposal more appealing. His mind was full of ideas, but none seemed truly viable without compromising the project's stability. It was then that a message from an old contact appeared on his phone. It was a businessman willing to invest a significant amount in the company in exchange for a small say in the decisions of the social projects. For Richard, this seemed like a convenient solution. He would get the investment he desperately needed and, at the same time, show Evelyn that he was also capable of acting for the good of the company. Without consulting Evelyn or the board, he scheduled a meeting with the investor the next day. He presented his vision of rapid growth and, within hours, signed an initial contract. Richard felt triumphant. He finally had something concrete to demonstrate his leadership abilities. However, when Evelyn learned about the contract, her disappointment was evident. As soon as Evelyn heard about the deal, she went straight to Richard's office. He was on a video call with the new investor, talking excitedly about expansion plans, but as soon as he saw Evelyn enter, a chill ran down his spine. She was furious, and he knew he wouldn't escape and scathed. When the call ended, Evelyn crossed her arms, looking at him with an intensity that made him shiver. You made a deal without the board's approval. How could you do that? Richard took a deep breath, preparing for the argument he knew was coming. 
Evelyn, it was an opportunity. We need this money to expand. I'm trying to save the company, just like you. She shook her head in disbelief. Save the company, Richard? Don't you realize how risky this is? This investor now has a say in our social project decisions. What happens when he starts wanting to shape everything to his own interests? Richard tried to maintain control. Evelyn, it's a calculated risk. He doesn't have control. He just wants a small share, nothing more. She narrowed her eyes. And what happened to the commitment to value people, to act with transparency? This isn't the type of leadership we promised to build. Those words hit him like a punch in the gut. He felt exposed, vulnerable, but also so resented Evelyn's constant judgment. Why are you always expecting me to fail? I'm trying, Evelyn. I want to do what's right. Evelyn took a deep breath, her gaze softening slightly, but her tone remained firm. It's not about wanting you to fail, Richard. It's about you understanding the impact of your actions. Leadership isn't just about making grand decisions. It's about responsibility. And acting in secret only confirms that you still don't get that. Richard looked away, feeling the weight of her words. Maybe, maybe I'll never understand it the way you want, Evelyn. She nodded, as if expecting that response. Maybe, but until you do, you'll just keep breaking the same promises you made. And believe me, that's a responsibility that can become too heavy to bear. Two weeks later, the board met again to discuss the deal Richard had made without approval. The members were concerned about the contract's implications, and the tension in the room was evident. When the meeting started, Evelyn was the first to express her concern. This contract represents a shift in the principles we established. Now we have an external investor interfering with our social projects. I believe everyone here understands the risks this represents. Mr. Haynes, after hearing Evelyn's objections, asked Richard to explain his decision. Richard swallowed hard, trying to maintain his composure. I believe the investment will give us the financial strength needed to expand and make the project sustainable in the long term. The board president interrupted him, his gaze stern. Richard, this isn't just about finances. We're dealing with a social purpose that cannot be compromised, and you acted impulsively. Richard felt the pressure mounting. He looked at Evelyn, and her expression was one of pure disapproval. He knew he had lost more than the board's trust, he had lost the last chance to show his ability to change. At the end of the meeting, the board decided to reassess Richard's position, considering reducing his authority over future decisions. Richard left the room in silence, feeling defeated. At that moment, he realized that if he really wanted to change, he needed to let go of his ego. Evelyn wasn't just trying to correct his actions, she was trying to teach him a new way to lead. And for the first time, Richard began to understand that the leadership he had always known no longer had a place here. After the disastrous meeting with the board, Richard was on the edge of an emotional breakdown. The feeling of defeat followed him home, a home that once symbolized his success but now felt empty and cold. He had spent years building a solid career, a powerful reputation, and suddenly everything he had achieved seemed to be falling apart. He knew the blame wasn't just on the board or Evelyn, the fault was rooted in his own choices. Everything he had tried to build with Evelyn was crumbling because of his impulsive decisions and stubbornness. Richard could no longer escape the truth. He was still acting with the same selfishness and immediacy that had always guided him, and it was distancing him from his own team, the board, and most importantly, Evelyn. The next morning, Richard decided to go to the office early. The feeling of emptiness and regret was suffocating, but he needed to understand what had really driven him to act that way. He knew there was no point in confronting Evelyn or the board again. He needed answers for himself. Sitting in his office, surrounded by reports and notes, Richard found himself analyzing his own decisions, something he had never done so deeply before. He recalled Evelyn's words during the meeting, how she had questioned his vision, not just as a leader, but as a person. You're still treating this company like a profit machine, she had said. Now, he was beginning to understand the weight of those words. He wondered what leadership really meant, and if he had ever understood its essence. 
That morning, as he looked at the empty office, he realized that true leadership might never have been a part of his life. Maybe he had just been playing a role, the role of a cold, calculating businessman who believed success depended solely on numbers. But now, facing the loss of his position and the trust of everyone around him, he began to understand that his leadership needed to go beyond numbers. Richard knew he needed to look at the people who were there, who had become more than just resources on a spreadsheet. The conversation with Evelyn in the late afternoon was a turning point. Evelyn appeared at the office door, her expression serious, but this time, there wasn't the coldness from before. Maybe she was seeing his vulnerability for the first time. Richard, tired of the disputes and conflicts, decided to be honest with her. Evelyn, he began, his voice hesitant, I, I know I've made many mistakes. I know my decisions have affected people beyond what I can repair, and I understand if you think it's not worth trying anymore. Evelyn watched him in silence, her arms crossed, but something in her posture showed that she was open to hearing him. It's a start, Richard, she said in a softer tone, but recognizing the mistakes isn't enough. What do you plan to do about it? Richard took a deep breath, feeling the weight of that question. He had thought about it, but he still didn't have definitive answers. I don't know, Evelyn. I just know I can't keep going the same way. Evelyn nodded slowly. That's true. Real change is something that needs to be practiced every day. You need to learn to listen and understand that leading isn't about always being in control, but about serving. Are you still willing to do that? Richard swallowed hard. Yes, I'm willing, but I don't know if I can do it alone. Evelyn gave a half-smile, as if she saw a spark of hope. No one can, Richard. That's why true leadership is done in partnership. You need to trust people. You need to know you can't do everything alone. Her words echoed in his mind. It was exactly what he had always done, tried to control everything alone, believing that trusting others would weaken him. But now, facing his own limitations, he began to see that maybe trust was the missing piece in his way of leading. After a long silence, Evelyn spoke. If you really want to change, there's a way, but it's going to be hard, and it will require you to leave behind everything you believe you know about leadership. Richard looked up, finally feeling a real hope. I'm willing. Do whatever it takes. Show me how. That same week, Evelyn took Richard to his first social project as part of the company's recovery commitment. The project focused on empowering women in vulnerable situations to enter the workforce. For Richard, used to the luxury and formality of business, the community environment felt uncomfortably real. In one of the meetings with the women participants, Richard found himself sitting among people he never imagined he'd meet. There were single mothers, women surviving abusive relationships, and others struggling to support their families. As he listened to their stories, Richard began to feel the impact of each one. This wasn't about numbers or profits. It was about people, about lives that depended on every penny, every opportunity. At the end of the meeting, one of the women approached him, an elderly lady with gray hair and deep eyes. You're Mr. Richard Blake, right? The owner of the company that's now supporting this project, she asked in a firm voice. Richard nodded, embarrassed. Yes, that's me. The lady looked at him for a long moment. My son worked for you a few years ago. He was let go without explanation after years of dedication to your company. It devastated him. He, he lost his motivation. Richard felt a tightness in his chest. I, I'm sorry. I didn't know. She shook her head slowly. Maybe you never cared to know, but I saw you here today, and I think maybe things are changing. I just hope this change is real. Richard felt small, exposed. The woman's words resonated as an undeniable truth. For years, he had been the cause of so much suffering without even realizing it. He was the businessman Evelyn had described, someone who didn't know the value of people. Back at the office, still shaken by the experience, Richard found Evelyn and thanked her for taking him to the project. Today, I really understood what you meant, Evelyn, he said sincerely. Evelyn looked at him, and this time, there was no coldness in her eyes, just understanding. This is just the beginning, Richard. 
Change takes time and action, but maybe over time, you'll start to understand that to lead is to serve. That same week, Evelyn encouraged him to attend a meeting with the social project team. It would be an important moment for him to hear the concerns and suggestions of the staff, something he had always neglected. Entering the room, Richard felt the team's eyes on him. Some were distrustful, others were expectant. He knew he had a lot to prove and little time to regain their trust. Evelyn encouraged him to speak, but he hesitated, realizing that maybe it was best to listen before speaking. The meeting began with testimonies from each team member, sharing their views and concerns about the project's progress. One of them, Mark, a young, idealistic, and dedicated person, talked about the challenges the project was facing due to a lack of resources and pressure for quick results. We need consistency, Richard, Mark said in a firm but respectful tone. The social project can't be treated like a short-term investment. These people rely on us, and that requires commitment and patience. Richard listened to every word carefully, absorbing the impact of his previous decisions. He realized that Mark, like Evelyn, wanted the project to thrive, but with a clear and lasting purpose. For the first time, he found himself wanting to understand others' perspectives instead of imposing his own. After the meeting, Richard decided to get directly involved in the project, not as a leader, but as a learner. He wanted to see firsthand how the decisions he made in the office affected people at the most basic level. Evelyn accompanied him on some visits to the community served by the project. In one visit, Richard met Julia, a young mother who had found in the training program a chance to improve her life. She spoke emotionally about how the project had helped her get a job, allowing her to support her young daughter. Richard felt a lump in his throat as he listened. Her story was a reminder that he was dealing with real lives, people with stories, struggles, and dreams. This wasn't just a project on a spreadsheet. He saw the impact of the work Evelyn so strongly advocated and understood that the most important results weren't in the numbers, but in the individual transformations of each person touched by the project. Back at the office, Richard found Evelyn and, with a more serious and determined tone, said, You were right, Evelyn. I always treated this as a tool for expansion, something to improve my image and get me back to the top. But today, I see that my vision was completely wrong. Evelyn watched him, considering every word. So, what do you plan to do now? He took a deep breath, choosing his words carefully. I want to learn. I want to do this the right way, to serve and see the real impact of what we're building. I want every person involved in these projects to find something I never had, true leadership. Evelyn nodded, seeing the sincerity in Richard for the first time. Then start showing that in every decision, in every conversation. Prove to all of us that you can change, not just with words, but with actions. In the following weeks, Richard continued participating in the projects, closely following the progress of each initiative and learning from the team. His role slowly shifted. He was no longer the boss giving orders, but someone willing to listen, understand, and serve. The board, though still skeptical, began to notice subtle changes in Richard's behavior. He seemed more receptive to criticism and less prone to impulsive decisions. Evelyn also observed his progress, though she remained cautious. She knew true change was a slow and constant process and wanted Richard to understand that. By the end of that month, Richard felt more at peace with himself and his actions. For the first time, he saw the project not as an opportunity for personal success, but as a mission that involved and benefited many lives. When Evelyn passed by his office, he stood up and thanked her. Thank you, Evelyn, for not giving up, even when it seemed I'd never understand. She smiled slightly. Leadership is a long road, Richard, but if you truly commit to it, I'm sure you'll discover its real value. With this new perspective, Richard felt ready for a journey of authentic and transformative leadership. Richard dedicated himself to the project with an intensity that surprised everyone around him. In the weeks following the crisis, he committed to learning every detail of the work, from weekly community visits to meticulous financial reports. Instead of seeing the project as a simple investment, he now viewed it as a mission. For Richard, this was an opportunity to rebuild not only the trust of the board and the team but also his own self-image. The board members began to notice this change. 
Evelyn was one of the first to see how involved Richard had become. In the initial months, she observed him from a distance, curious to see if this new attitude would last. However, over time, Richard's constant presence at the project, his sincere questions, and his effort to listen and understand showed that he was genuinely committed. As his determination became evident, the board's respect and trust in him also grew. At first, Richard attended the project meetings as a formality, but soon these visits became an essential part of his routine. He started learning the participants' names, understanding their stories, and tracking their progress. It was a reality very different from the luxurious office and meetings with influential businessmen that previously filled his time. On one of these visits, he had a long conversation with Anna, a middle-aged woman who had lost her job and found a new chance to start over in the project. Anna told him, with a sincerity that moved him, about the difficulties she had faced and how the initiative helped her regain her dignity. It's more than a job for me, Mr. Richard, Anna said, her eyes full of emotion. It's a new life. For the first time, I feel like someone believes in my potential. Richard felt a lump in his throat. He wasn't just helping one person, he was changing entire lives. Every story he heard was a reminder of the impact he could have, and this realization made his commitment grow even more. He wanted to be worthy of the trust these people placed in the project, and above all, he wanted to show that he truly cared. The project was no longer just a plan on paper, it had come to life. The results began to show, and with them, the company's prestige grew. The board members who had previously doubted Richard's ability to lead responsibly now showed signs of approval. In board meetings, Richard remained calm and straightforward, avoiding the grandiose demeanor that had once characterized him. He presented the project results with humility, emphasizing the team's work and highlighting Evelyn's essential role. Every piece of data was tangible proof that the project was making a difference, and the board members did not hide their satisfaction. Mr. Haynes, the chairman of the board, commented in one of those meetings, Richard, I see you're handling this project with a seriousness that many of us didn't expect. This pilot project is a success, and I'm sure we can expand it sustainably. Richard smiled quietly, feeling the weight of the approval. He knew Evelyn had been an indispensable mentor in this process, and at every meeting, he made sure to acknowledge her. However, what had once been just professional admiration was beginning to turn into something more. As they spent more time together, Richard started seeing Evelyn differently. She was more than just a brilliant leader, she was a strong, honest woman, passionate about her work. He noticed this in the way she talked to each project participant, in the attention she paid to details, and in the respect she showed everyone. Evelyn was a quiet force that inspired trust and respect. During one of their community visits, Richard and Evelyn attended an event organized by the project beneficiaries. The participants had prepared a simple celebration to thank the team for their support. Upon arriving, Richard watched Evelyn interact with people with a natural kindness that deeply touched him. She seemed to belong there, and everyone responded to her warmth and presence. She really understands these people, Richard thought to himself, admiringly. Evelyn didn't just lead the project, she was part of it, and people felt that. When the celebration ended, Richard offered to walk Evelyn back to the office. As they walked through the quiet streets of the community, he felt compelled to learn more about her. Evelyn was an enigmatic figure, and he wanted to understand what motivated her to be so passionately involved in their work. Evelyn, he began with a softer tone, I've always been impressed by your dedication to this project. What led you to get so deeply involved? She smiled, a genuine smile that lit up her face. Richard, I guess I've always felt the need to do something beyond myself. When I was younger, I saw people close to me facing hardships, and it left a mark. Working on something that can help others start over is, for me, the best way to give meaning to my own life. Those words touched Richard in an unexpected way. He had never allowed himself to see the work from that perspective. For him, it was a way to build reputation and legacy, but for Evelyn, it was a personal mission. And from that moment, he began to understand what really drove the extraordinary woman beside him. In the following weeks, Richard and Evelyn started working even closer. The partnership that had once been formal and cautious now became more relaxed and filled with mutual admiration. 
they discussed strategies, shared ideas, and supported each other in every decision. However, Richard realized that something had changed in his heart. He didn't just admire Evelyn, he was beginning to fall in love with her. This feeling caught him by surprise. Richard, who had always been cautious and even skeptical about personal relationships at work, now found himself thinking about Evelyn often, looking for ways to be by her side and to see her smile. She was a steady yet welcoming presence, someone who inspired him to be better, who challenged him to move forward. One night, after a long meeting, they stayed in the office, talking about the project's future. The conversation, which started professionally, soon became more personal. Richard took the opportunity to express his gratitude. Evelyn, he said sincerely, I really owe you everything I've learned in the past few months. Before, I thought success was about controlling and expanding, but you taught me that the real value is in building something that truly matters. Evelyn looked at him, surprised by the depth of his words. I'm glad to know that this meant something to you, Richard. Seeing this change in you is one of the most rewarding things I've ever experienced. Their eyes met, and for a moment, the atmosphere seemed filled with a subtle and pleasant tension. Richard felt the urge to move closer but hesitated. He didn't want to cross boundaries that could jeopardize their professional relationship, but at the same time, he knew that what he felt for Evelyn was real. As days went by, Richard found himself more and more drawn to Evelyn. He noticed the little details about her, the way she smiled when talking about something that moved her, how she inspired everyone around her, and the conviction with which she defended the project's purpose. He realized that Evelyn was unique, someone who brought a depth and meaning to his life he had never experienced before. One particularly long night at the office, while they were both reviewing reports, Richard, without thinking, let a comment slip. You know, you're one of the most amazing people I've ever met, right? Evelyn laughed softly, surprised by the sincerity of his words. Thank you, Richard, but I think you've also changed a lot and become someone admirable. Her words resonated in his heart, and he realized he was truly in love. But this time, it wasn't just an impulse or a fleeting attraction, it was a deep admiration, a desire to share the same mission with Evelyn and to build something meaningful together. That night, as he walked home, Richard understood that the transformation Evelyn had brought about in him wasn't just professional. She had changed his heart, and he knew that regardless of what the future held, his life would never be the same. The days continued to pass, and Richard and Evelyn grew closer. Their professional partnership evolved into something more intimate, a closeness that deepened with every interaction. Richard, who had once been driven by ego and power, now found himself sharing moments of vulnerability and authenticity with Evelyn. He felt lighter, more alive, and above all, more complete. Evelyn felt the same. As she spent more time with Richard, she saw how much he had changed and how he was becoming a truly admirable man. His transformation wasn't just a facade, it was genuine, and that attracted her in a way she never expected. Evelyn was impressed by his determination to redeem himself and build something that truly mattered, and gradually, her heart opened to him. In the following weeks, Richard found small ways to get closer to Evelyn. He invited her to lunch after meetings, suggested walks together at the end of a long day, and always found time to talk about things beyond work. They shared stories about their lives, their fears, and their dreams. Slowly, the line between professional and personal blurred, and they found themselves in a new space where feelings were clear but unspoken. One night, after another intense day on the project, Richard and Evelyn stayed in the office to review one last report. The dim light and the silence of the night created an intimate and welcoming atmosphere. They were sitting side by side, their arms almost touching, and Richard couldn't help but feel a wave of desire and tenderness as he looked at her. I wanted to thank you, he said suddenly, breaking the silence, for everything, for teaching me, for believing in me, even when I didn't deserve it. Evelyn looked at him, surprised by the depth in his voice. You don't need to thank me, Richard. The change came from you. I just showed you the way. He smiled, but there was more he wanted to say, something that had been weighing on his chest for days. His heart was racing, and he knew it was time to be honest about his feelings. Evelyn, he began, hesitant but determined, I, I, I can't hide what I feel anymore. The truth is, I'm in love with you. The words hung in the air for a moment, 
and Evelyn was silent, her eyes fixed on his. Richard felt his heartbeat even faster, fearing he had made a mistake by revealing his feelings. But instead of pulling away, Evelyn smiled softly, her eyes shining. I'm in love with you too, Richard, she confessed, with a sincerity that made his heart race. For some time now, I've been feeling this way, but I was afraid of how it might affect everything we've built together. Richard laughed, a relieved and emotional laugh. I had the same fear, he admitted, but I can't pretend these feelings don't exist anymore. I want to be with you, truly, not just as work partners, but as something more. Evelyn nodded, still smiling. I want that too. I think we're finally ready for something more. Still sitting side by side, they moved closer, and Richard felt his heart skip a beat as Evelyn's lips met his in a gentle, intense kiss. It was a moment of pure connection where all barriers fell, and only the feeling remained. The kiss was followed by a hug, a gesture of affection that sealed their decision to start something together. After that day, their relationship naturally blossomed. Evelyn and Richard began going out together outside of work, exploring the city, sharing dinners and outings. Every moment was an opportunity to get to know each other more deeply, and the more they learned about one another, the more they realized how well they complemented each other. At work, their dynamic remained professional and focused, but the team noticed the sparkle in both their eyes and the bond that seemed to deepen. Evelyn and Richard made it clear that despite their relationship, their commitment to the project would continue to be the priority. However, it was evident that the love they shared also fueled their dedication to their work. As the months passed, the project reached new heights of success. The local community thrived, and participants found job opportunities and personal growth that had once seemed impossible. The gradual expansion of the project into other regions was underway, and the company gained recognition for its positive and sustainable impact. The board was pleased and finally gave Richard full approval to resume his leadership roles. Mr. Haynes, always a tough critic, made it a point to congratulate him in a meeting. Richard, he said, you've shown us that it's possible to change and learn. The project is a success, and much of that is due to your commitment and vision. I'm proud to say you are a true leader now. Richard humbly thanked him, knowing that the journey to get there had been long and challenging. He looked at Evelyn, sitting next to him, and felt a wave of gratitude for everything she had done for him. Without her, he knew he wouldn't have come this far. Outside of work, Richard and Evelyn's relationship continued to grow. They were happy together, and the love they shared was genuine and deep. Richard found himself wanting to build a future with her, and he knew Evelyn felt the same way. On a sunny afternoon, as they walked through a park, Richard held Evelyn's hand and stopped, looking directly into her eyes. I never thought I would find someone like you, he said, his voice filled with emotion. You've changed my life, Evelyn, and I want to spend the rest of my life making you happy. Evelyn smiled, her eyes filling with tears of joy. I want that too, Richard. You're not the same man I met at first. You're so much better, and I love you for who you've become. Richard smiled and kissed her right there in the park, surrounded by the sounds of leaves rustling and children laughing. It was the start of a new journey for both of them, a journey that promised to be as challenging as it was rewarding. But this time, they knew they would face everything together. The project continued to grow, and the company became an example of social responsibility and ethical leadership. Richard and Evelyn took on co-leadership roles, working together to ensure the positive impact continued to spread to new communities. They became known not just as successful leaders, but also as an inspiring couple, proving that love, ethics, and dedication can transform lives and build something truly meaningful. The company received numerous awards and media praise for its social impact, but for Richard and Evelyn, the true legacy lay in the lives they helped change. Financial success was important, but it paled in comparison to the joy of seeing families thrive, people starting over, and dreams being realized because of the work they started together. Months later, in a small, intimate ceremony, Richard and Evelyn got married, surrounded by friends, colleagues, and community members they had helped transform. They exchanged vows of love and commitment. These were not just promises of romantic love, but also commitments to continue working together for a better world, to lead with their hearts, and to build a legacy that would transcend their own lives. 
That night, as they danced under the stars, Richard realized how much his life had changed. The man who once sought success at all costs now understood that true value lay in building something with purpose and passion alongside the woman he loved. And so, together, Richard and Evelyn began a new chapter, not just of their lives, but of a legacy that would continue to inspire and transform for many years to come.